This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about WBTC, also known as Wrapped Bitcoin. If you're interested in learning how to make money in both bull and bear markets, or you just want to see what I'm trading or investing in, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So Wrapped Bitcoin, this is sort of part of our tour of DeFi, decentralized finance. I've been getting a lot of questions about this, so I thought I would do a video about it. WBTC, Wrapped Bitcoin, it's a token that is backed by Bitcoin. You might also hear it referred to as tokenized Bitcoin, Bitcoin that's been turned into a token. And by token, we mean an ERC-20 coin, which is sort of the, the format of tokens or coins that trade on the Ethereum network. So if you want, you can see it as a form of Bitcoin that has been somehow imported into the Ethereum network and that can work with the Ethereum protocol. Some people like this because it can be sent more quickly than Bitcoin, because uh, Ethereum blocks are created more quickly than Bitcoin, and as such, WBTC can be sent more quickly than Bitcoin. It can also be used as collateral in DeFi protocols, which we'll talk about at the end of this video, and I'll explain what that means if it sounds like total Greek to you. One thing I should say from the outset is wrap Bitcoin, WBTC, it is not Bitcoin. It's not something that uh, I am holding right now. I obviously can't offer investment recommendations, but I think it's interesting because it's just one more use for Bitcoin. And the more uses you have for Bitcoin, the more demand there will ultimately be. This is not what I would do with my Bitcoin. I should emphasize up front, I hold my Bitcoin as a long-term holder, holder or hodler on a hardware wallet, and I'm not interested in wrapping it and giving it to someone else. But I thought you should talk about it and know that it does exist. So there are other forms of Bitcoin, quote unquote Bitcoin, I won't keep saying that, but that really is what I mean by it, that trade on the Ethereum network. So right now, the total Bitcoin that is on Ethereum or the total representation of Bitcoin that's trading on the Ethereum network is about 1.3 billion. And I believe the Ethereum market cap right now is something like 35 35 billion or so. So this is a fairly um, noticeable part of that market cap. We're going to be talking about WBTC, which is right here. This is the, 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 the major form of Bitcoin on the Ethereum network. There are other forms. Uh, there's REN, uh, REN, REN BTC. You can see its market cap is much smaller, uh, 266 million versus 987 million for WBTC. There's HBTC, there are a couple BTCs, quote unquote, on Ethereum, but we're gonna focus on the major one because it will give you an idea. Here is the uh, the website for WBTC. We can see Wrap Bitcoin delivers the power of Bitcoin with the flexibility of an ERC-20 token, as we talked about. And this is a very helpful website. You can see all the different uh, companies and DAOs, decentralized organizations that are involved. and there are basically three main groups that are involved with WBTC. Before I talk about them, I should say that the main reason, as far as I can tell, that people are interested in importing Bitcoin into the Ethereum network is basically to borrow some of, the some of that liquidity, some of that market cap. Bitcoin is currently about five times the market cap of Bitcoin itself. It's about five times that, five or six times that of Ethereum. And so this is a way that Ethereum can sort of piggyback and draw on some of that liquidity. I think it's interesting to see different protocols talking to each other. As I said, uh, this is not something I would personally do, but why not? Why not have exchange rates? Why not have different, this is more than an exchange rate, but why not have different ways of different protocols talking to each other? You never know what it might lead to. If you wrap your Bitcoin, if you do this, you're basically giving away your Bitcoin, something bad might happen. So it's not something I'm interested in, but as an experiment, and I can't emphasize that enough, I think it's quite interesting. So there are these three main groups that are involved in wrapped Bitcoin. There are, there's the DAO, the Decentralized Autonomous Organization, and this is a bunch of groups that hold the keys to these multi-signature contracts. And they basically, you can think of them as being like a corporation or company that controls this. It's much more decentralized. It's controlled by code and cryptography and uh, as such, it's completely decentralized. It's not something you could uh, go and shut down. 
So these are the groups that hold the keys to the multi-sig contract for WBTC. And as such, they have the power to add or delete merchants and custodians, sort of bring them into the WBTC system and, and kick them out as well. And um, so let's talk about what merchants and custodians are. Merchants are the ones who basically they create new WBTC and then they destroy WBTC. They can sort of create more. So basically you go to a merchant, you give them some Bitcoin and they will hold that Bitcoin. They will actually give it to a custodian. The custodian will keep the Bitcoin safe, hopefully, supposedly. And then the merchant will give you WBTC. So you give your w, you, your your Bitcoin to a merchant. They mint some new WBTC and give it to you. Likewise, if you want to if you want to reverse that, you would go back to a merchant. You would say, "Here's my WBTC. Give me Bitcoin for it." Now you can see there are a lot of there are a lot of moving parts here. Something could go wrong. This is obviously a new experiment. It's worked well so far, and I'll show you how it's backed and verified. But those are the three groups: you have the the, the DAO, the merchants. And the custodians, the custodians, as I said, hold the actual Bitcoin that backs the WBTC. Now, what's kind of cool, if you go to the website, the WBTC network net site, uh, net, um, website, which I'll, I'll link to, you can uh, um, you can take a look at the order book. And this basically shows you how many WBTC there are and then how many actual Bitcoin are backing that uh that WBTC. We can see that it's basically the same thing. There's a little rounding error here, uh, which amounts to a few thousand dollars. I don't think that's anything to worry about. I'm not sure why there must be some lag in terms of the actual uh, custody amounts of Bitcoin here. But then they allow you to do an on-chain validation here to see that, that this Bitcoin is held by certain addresses, public addresses, that are uh, related to the WBTC Network. You can click on proof of assets here and it'll give you the custodian addresses for that are holding the Bitcoin for WBTC. And then you can add them all up. And so this is a way of sort of cryptographically proving control of the Bitcoin that backs the WBTC. Uh, you can also, and then you can see the transactions down here as well as uh, new Bitcoin, new WBTC are made. You can also click on partners and see all the different companies that are involved with this. You can see, for example, Alameda Research is a merchant. Um, and then you have various exchanges like uh, Beaky and Bamboo Relay. If you click on um, one of these merchants, which, which I'm going to do here, I'm going to click on CoinList. I don't really know anything about this company, but they are a merchant, obviously. So they will allow you to create WBTC. You basically go to this website, you hook up your Bitcoin wallet and you give them Bitcoin and then they'll give you WBTC. BTC in an equal uh, an equal amount of WBTC for the amount of BTC that you uh, deposit. In exchange for this, you pay them a 0.25% conversion fee. It's just like any other exchange rate. So you get back a little bit less WBTC than you give them BTC, but it's still, that's a fairly reasonable uh, fee, at least at this point. Again, it's not something I'm going to be doing, but this is how you would actually exchange your Bitcoin for WBTC Bitcoin is a different protocol, so you can't do it on the Ethereum network. You have to go to one of these merchants to get BTC, uh, to get WBTC for your BTC. The other thing you could do if you just want to buy some WBTC is you can go to one of these decentralized exchanges or DEXs. This is a Uniswap. You basically just go there and it asks you if you want to hook up your wallet. I have a MetaMask wallet hooked up here and then you can basically you can uh, you can buy WBTC so let's see I have some die in my wallet this is a stable coin so this is equal to about 40 US dollars and then it'll allow me to buy some WBTC in exchange for that you can also if you have some ETH in your wallet I have just a very small amount of ETH here uh, I can I don't have 40 ETH I have something like uh, 0.04 then it will allow you to convert your ETH to WBTC. So Uniswap is basically basically an exchange that allows you to move between these various tokens that are ERC-20 tokens. So again, the two ways to get WBTC is you can give them your precious BTC, which I would never do, and then they'll give you WBTC back. Or you can go to one of these exchanges and swap your DAI or your Ethereum for WBTC. 
Now, once you have your wrapped Bitcoin, your WBTC, what do you do with it? Well, there are a couple of things I can think of doing. And again, they don't seem uh, super attractive to me. You can go to Compound, which is this lending, uh, lending uh, protocol, lending borrowing protocol, and you can check out the various interest rates uh, for them. So I'm going to be looking on the supply side here, supply markets, because I want to give them some, some of my WBTC. We can see right now they're paying an interest rate, an annualized interest rate of just 0.24% on Ether, which is pretty, uh, not really as good as you can even get in the real world with US dollars. Looks like they're paying a little bit more for DAI, which are similar to US dollars, 2.92%. So that, that's just to put into context what they are paying for wrapped BTC, WBTC. They're paying approximately the same as they're paying for Ether, 0.22%. So what you could do, if you wanted to earn interest on your, your Bitcoin, and this would be a bad way of doing it, simply because uh, you can go to BlockFi, for example, and get something like, uh, I want to say 6% on your BTC. But if you wanted to experiment with this, you go to CoinList, you give them Bitcoin, they give you wrapped Bitcoin, and then you deposit that wrapped Bitcoin as an ERC-20 token into Compound, and you can earn interest. Again, these interest rates may change. I'm interested in just learning how the mechanics of this work. This doesn't look like a very good savings account to me or a good trade at this point, but I think it's important to just understand how these things work. Now you could also, um, you can also borrow wrapped Bitcoin, it looks like on Compound, and you'll pay them for that privilege, you'll pay them 3.99%. So this is obviously how Compound, uh, the protocol makes money in this spread between borrowing and lending in the same way um, uh, safe, basically depositing and lending in the same way that traditional banks do. So what else can you do with your wrapped Bitcoin? Well, you could also take it over to the MakerDAO, which is another Ethereum uh, protocol or a protocol built on Ethereum. And I'll, I'll link to a couple DeFi videos that I have. So you, if there's one on MakerDAO, if you want to explore this a little more, but we can basically, if we click on use DAI here, it will take us to Oasis, which is part of MakerDAO. And then what we can do is we can actually borrow DAI against our WBTC. We just click right here, WBTC. I don't currently have any in my wallet, so it's not really showing up. But I can, this is the big picture version of this is you take your BTC, you go to one of the merchants, as we said, you convert it to uh, WBTC, and then you can uh, deposit it into MakerDAO, deposit it here at a rate of, uh, you're borrowing against it at a rate of about 4.25%. Now, basically, this is an over -collateral collateralized loan, which means you have to deposit more collateral than you get back. They will liquidate your account if it hits 150%. Uh, and so the, the, the least you'd really want to do is something like, I would say, uh, 200%. So that means for every uh, you basically have to deposit twice as much as you want to pull out. And so essentially, I think the way to think about it is you would basically double this interest rate that you could borrow against your Bitcoin for 8.50%, uh, 8 if, if I'm thinking about this correctly. So basically, you take your Bitcoin, you go to a merchant, you convert it to WBTC, you deposit it into MakerDAO, and then you can pull out some DAI, which are basically US dollars. Uh, it's it's uh, they're algorithmically pegged very close to the U.S. dollar, and then of course you could you can convert Dai almost one for one to U.S. dollars. So this would be kind of a, a a not a purely decentralized DeFi way of borrowing against your Bitcoin. The other, th but a a, a a version of it where you're sort of relying on the the uh, wrap Bitcoin DAO to make sure that your WBTC is always backed by BTC. The simpler way, you could just deposit your Bitcoin at uh, BlockFi or one of these companies and take out a loan against it in US dollars. But again, interesting to see how one might do it using the DeFi system, and this looks to be how you would do it. You definitely don't want to get liquefi uh, liquidated. They'll charge you a 13% fee. So you basically want to keep your collateral above 100 and 50 percent and because um, because Bitcoin and Ethereum are volatile this is why they make sure that these loans 
are over collateralized. So I think this is an interesting exper experiment. It's a little bit similar to um, maybe it's slightly better than Laszlo buying uh, two pizzas with 10,000 Bitcoin. Uh, and it, who knows which will be viewed by history as the worst trade. Probably this pizza trade is worse. Wrap Bitcoin looks fairly safe to me. But again, there are a lot of moving parts. Even though there is a DAO, a decentralized organization here, you're still uh, trusting to a certain extent uh, that that Bitcoin, that they'll give you back Bitcoin in exchange for WBTC. You can see things falling apart where you just end up with WBTC and there's no longer a way to convert it back into BTC. So much better to hold, in my opinion, much better to hold Bitcoin on a hardware wallet. It's yours. No one can take it from you. And you're not dependent on these protocols. Uh, but again, I think this is interesting. It is a it is a protocol or a token that adds adds to the demand for Bitcoin. So to the extent that Bitcoin gets locked up in, w, in WBTC, it does create more demand, which should create higher prices for Bitcoin itself. It's interesting to see it's this is um, it's almost like the, the brother and sister uh, trying to communicate with each other, Bitcoin trying to communicate to his little sister, Ethereum. And again, this is all very experimental, but I think it's interesting to follow and to see where it goes from here. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I put out my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for listening and I'll see you in the next video.